All right, I, guys, I got to admit, this one this one got out of hand. I just want to show you here. 72 degrees in this room. I tested every setting of the R8, and I'll tell you why. Um, I made that last video where I was talking about how the R8 overheated, right? And it's not surprising. It's a very, let's say, petite camera. <laughs> it's, uh, it's felt. It's, uh, it's small. Um... And with that, sometimes it's hard to it's hard to manage heat in a small camera. And so I'm not surprised there were some issues. Um, but I made that last video, and I got a few questions back. One was from my buddy Peter Gregg, who said, Wow, what a surprise. Overheating just sitting inside on a desk. Would 30p do the same thing, you think? Hmm, very interesting. And I agree with him. It is very interesting. It's a great question. And I set out, I set out to answer that question in this video, and then things just... <sighs> just got out of hand but yeah and then tim asked another good question how long can the r8 record 4k 30 video on one battery and that's also a very good question so what i decided to do kind of by accident was just test all the settings and when you start testing things there's a thousand things you can test right here's my test and it's unreliable Let's get that out of the way, right? <laughs> I would not bet money on the results of these tests, but they are my tests and I ran them. What I wanted to know was if you have an R8 in any frame rate or any resolution, right? Any frame rate or any resolution, and you just set that puppy up and you like, you're like, you hit record, boom, and you walk away, how long will it record before it stops for any reason for any reason it could be the battery it could be the card life it could be the heat it could be it could be the sd card size it, i think i said that already but anyways whatever whatever makes it die just how long can you can you set it up press record walk away and feel any degree of confidence um that you're gonna you know how long how long the camera will record so i tested all of that on every oops on every setting and that's what that's what we're going to do today. So before we even get started, I want to tell I want to say again, yeah, 72 degrees in this room. This is a fake light. This is not sunlight. It's not adding any heat at all, okay? Um, the servo was always on just because that's how I did it the first time. So I just left the AF servo on even though that probably does that probably does use a little bit extra battery, but the point is is I wasn't trying to save the battery. I was trying to in a standardized setting, you know, I would probably keep AF on, so I just want to see how it works, you know what I mean? But I did it all the same on all these. Screen brightness was uh, whatever it came at as default, which is four. Screen brightness four, I didn't change that. So it's just fresh out of the box, and then every test was done with a fresh battery. Fresh battery, completely cooled down camera. So plenty of time. I'm just trying to make this as accurate as possible, if that makes sense. So first test right here. 1080 24 the run time was one hour 56 minutes and 47 seconds now the reason it died was because of the battery now this this is interesting to me because you would think this would be the longest setting right you think this would be where it lasts the longest 1080 oh i didn't do any of the light ipb settings just the regular ones okay so just so you know um 1080 24 only made it to under two hours supposedly this camera has a two hour time limit in it, but none of the settings can get to two hours based on the battery life. I feel like it's the wrong battery, I really do. Or I, it just doesn't make any sense to me to have a recording limit and then not have a battery in it that can reach that recording limit. It, it becomes a meeting, meaningless spec on paper, but that's, that's where we are with that. So the second test, I went ahead and did um, 1080, 30 frames per second. Now. I never use 24 frames per second. So I, I went ahead and tested 24 frames per second in 1080 and 4K because I know a lot of people that's important to. And I know how I feel when those people who test things use 24 but not 30. So I did use solid here. So this is why you'll know. But this is, th that, or that's why I did that. But this is confusing to me because 30 frames per second actually lasted longer than than uh, 24 frames a second and you would think with it taking six more pictures every second or you know frames every second it would last less long but again died because of the battery this is really strange i can't explain it i don't have to it's just what happened so uh weird huh okay <laughs> 1080 60 frames per second lasted for 94 minutes 30 seconds died because of the battery this is funny this is the one that started it all started it all i actually 
my first test, I thought I was testing 4K60 again. And I was so excited because I thought I had a magic battery. And I was so disappointed when the test was over after 94 minutes to realize that I had uh, set it up in 1080. I think I think I switched over to do, to do um, slow motion. And then when I flipped it back, I think that's what happened. I think it ended up reverting back to 1080 60 instead of 4k 60, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. Either way, I ended up with this great measurement for how long it'll last with in 1080 60 and decided I'm just going to do all of them. So that's what, that's what led to this. So here we are. Here we are. Okay. 4k 24 lasted 73 minutes and 22 seconds. So this is the thing I'm, I'm glad that was, that's a long time. It eventually died because of the battery. Again, the battery is the common thing. Um, it's a small battery, you know, I mean that, that makes it light, you know, there's just trade-offs, not the longest battery life in the world. But the thing that made me nervous is again, in 72 degree temperature, it started building up heat and it's obvious the camera doesn't have a way of getting rid of it. And so, had the battery lasted any longer, I think eventually it might have overheated. This factor was even worse in 4K30. So 4K30 obviously didn't last as long as 24. That's what you would have expected up here. Um, but it's just not what we got. Um, again, it died because of the battery. Now this built up heat fast. This was almost to the point of overheating. It did go for an hour and a half. There is no record limit but it would not have gone on forever and ever and ever and ever um, without, without overheating, I don't think, because there were like, I think, I think there were six overheating bars by the time it shut off, which was, it would just, again, most of what I do is outside in the summertime. So, uh, you know, uh, but anyways, and then we get to the big one, 4K60 frames per second, and it overheated, like I said yesterday, that's what stopped it was overheating at 26 minutes and, and 24 seconds. <sighs> so I tested it again because I didn't like that answer. And I, my second test, which again was a completely cool camera. I, I wasn't <laughs> happy with this either. So I stopped testing this because I wasn't happy with the, with the direction it was going. Okay. So here's the thing. I'm doing more testing. I'll have another video out tomorrow where I get into this a lot more extensively. But what... I know for sure. Oh, what I know for sure is these 4K 60 frames per second files are about two gigabits, gigabytes per minute. So they are big files. So keep that in mind. I also, there's some things that I liked about this. It seems, um, it seems that the camera is well programmed from the standpoint of it, it handles this okay. Whether the batteries died or they overheated, Regardless, the result was I always, it always kept the file. I didn't lose the footage, at, at least, you know, I, I didn't get anything after the battery died, of course, but I didn't lose anything ahead of that. And it didn't get any, I didn't give me any weird errors, whether it overheated or the battery died, it handled it well. And I think that's important because that does, that does show some reliability, even if it can't handle heat all that well, it's not going to screw you over in the process. So um, that's a good sign. Uh, it doesn't also doesn't break, break up any of these clips into chunks still. So I think we're free of that. That's a, we're good. We're in modern times. Um, my big takeaway here is, uh, this camera is overheating and it's legitimately overheating. And I know that's a weird thing to say. If you're new to Canon, that probably doesn't make any sense, but there was a whole fiasco where they came out with the Canon R5 and, and it became notorious for overheating. And then when people looked into it more, what they determined was the camera wasn't hot. Like it wasn't hot at all. It wasn't actually overheating. There was some sort of timer. It was programmed to say it was overheating even when it wasn't. This one is not doing that. There's pros and cons to that if it's true. And again, I'm doing more testing on this. I have a video out tomorrow. If it's true, what that means is even though it overheats, you can do things to mitigate it. Hmm. So if that's the case, so it looks like that's the case. Like I said, I'll have a video out tomorrow where you guys can see that. Um, if you have any other questions, y'all, thank you. I hopefully Peter and, uh, Peter and Tom, was it Tom? Yeah, Tim. Sorry, Tim. 
Uh, this answers your questions. If you have any more questions, just leave them in the comments. And again, I'll try to make a video about it. I'll have links below if you're interested in the R8. I'll have a, a link to the package that I bought. I got the kit lens. And um, yeah, uh, this is fun. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Please subscribe if you are. And uh, that's it. See you next time.